Our boat seems so different than normal, I can't even explain. Feels like when we actually bought the boat and we moved onto it for the first time. It smells different, it looks different, it seems like other people have... Is this an Airbnb? That's right, we're back on our sailing boat in Aruba after a great few weeks buying all things Tailey in the UK. We're raring to go on the boat job front and stick around till the end of the video when we get some unexpected ah, no, guests. Oh no. I think it's the heat, Zach, but it smells so wooden in here. Yeah, I bet. And it just seems so woody. Bloody hell, it's hot in here. Woo wee. Before we left, we couldn't really think of what the heat was like. We were like, I remember it being a bit sweaty before we left, but what were we making a fuss about? These are some bananas we bought all the way from the UK. Lovely. What is all this stuff? This is all stuff for our haul out and for the next season, I guess. There's some more, I don't know, homely things, yeah. I guess. Um, and then new sander, new pump for the front shower sump that we're going to glass in at some point, new bilge pump, I think it's like eight times the capacity of our last one or something like that. And then loads of true design seacocks we're going to be fitting over the next week or so. Cutlass bearing in there, some rigging bits, some electronic bits for all our big electronics project that we're going to be doing over the next, well that might be a bit longer away, that might be in three weeks or so we start doing this, but yeah. that's the fan for the cupboard so it doesn't overheat in there. Clutch cleats, halyard deflector with loads of Manel rivets as well. We brought it all back in our suitcases. There's an air fryer down there. Successful UK trip. We've just dug these out of the cases because our mate Phoebo, who's on a catamaran here, he dropped us at the airport on the way to the UK. And now he's taking us, bless him, he's taking us to the supermarket so we can actually fill up our fridge because it is empty. We cracked open a tin of pears earlier just because we needed some kind of sustenance. And we had a ramen. And that has been our daytime fuel. So not enough by any means. I just have to make sure that when we come out of here, we push this across and no bugs can get in. And it works. Okay. It's so fancy in here. It is. What is that? <laughs> with the fridge restocked, it's time to crack on with replacing our through holes. If you were with us last year when we hauled out in the UK, you might remember we replaced six corroded seacocks, but left the seven blakes. We were happy with our choice to do this, based on the time we had out and our refit fund. But Zach had now removed the blakes as some of them were looking a bit funky, so it's time to prep the holes and get them ready for the rest of the conversion to true design. We've been prized away from Seacox and we are heading to some new friends of ours boat. We just met them called Chris and Jenny and yeah they're on a wicked Amel 54 I think. This is Jenny Hi. and Chris is over here. And now these guys have, where did you buy your boat? In Malaysia? In Malaysia, yes. She's a beautiful Amal 54. Um, and yeah, they sailed all the way here to Aruba. So we 
we've actually come to Renaissance Island today, which is a little sand strip south of Aruba. It's about a kilometer actually from the boatyard and we had to get a little private boat here. It's pretty cool, but our friends get it included in their marina stay, which is such a perk. Anyway, we want to take this opportunity to thank today's sponsor of the video, which are Valon Sunglasses. She noticed they're brand new, super funky looking, and very we'll be, Mad Max. Yeah, will be perfect for sailing. Here in the tropics, obviously the UV is really, really strong and really damaging to your eyes. And we really want to protect our eyes. These are UV 400, which means they're 100% UV blocking. Obviously they've got these side leather wraparounds, which mean that our eyes are protected from all angles. One of my favorite things is actually, if I take them off, you can see these metal uh, ear, what are they called, ear holders? Ear loops. Ear loops. Uh, they actually bend so you can get a really custom fit around your head and when you're leaning over water like this doing an anchor you're not kind of risk them falling off your face they are also polycarbonate lenses meaning they're really high quality and durable anyway i have the heron glacier which is the traditional mountaineering glasses actually they've got the mirrored lenses which i just really like um, and zach show off your ones come on. Yeah, go on i've got the heron ocean ones yeah which are the sailing range yeah they're really wicked sunglasses i'm not squinting at all and i haven't been squinting at all today and it's been super bright yeah so yeah, thanks Valon, these are wicked and we can't wait to yeah. get sailing with them. Yeah. The island's a pretty big tourist hotspot, but despite this, we were surprised to see how much wildlife there was. Sure, not all of the animals here are entirely native, but it seems they have created a pretty unique ecosystem here. <laughs> Plus, I don't think I'll ever get used to seeing these flamingos casually walking around the place. to let our hair down with like-minded people before the next few weeks of intense boat work started. It's time to spray the seeds. I did spray them. Just now? Um, well, I don't know. They're dry already. Oh, I'm rocking the upper lip sweat. We are trying to grow some sprouts for the first time ever. Um, however, it's 35 degrees or so here, so they dry out very quickly and on the instructions it says, do not let dry out, so we'll see, but we're constantly spraying. Yeah, I'm not convinced it's gonna work. No. It still smells of vinegar. Though. I cleaned it out no. lots of times. We used to use this like vinegary solution to clean the surfaces because it's all like natural and healthy. Anyway, Zach didn't like it because it smelled like too like too much like a fish and chip shop. So we've yeah, we've swapped <laughs> just normal spray spray now, but this can be now used for our our sprouts. And hopefully they will work. I mean, they're opening up, so that's something, isn't it? Yeah, they are. Just... I think they'll work. Yes, yeah, so the inside's an inch. We measured the inside of the blade, or yeah. did we measure the outside of the blade? No, look, so what we measured is, is these. We measured it like that, yeah. which is an inch and a half. Yeah. Oh, no, sorry, an inch. The inside of that is an inch. But that doesn't matter, it's the outside that's got to go through the hole, isn't it? And the outside of these an inch and a half. That's fine, we know what we've done wrong, and all we can do is work around it, yeah? It won't hurt to have slightly bigger sea cocks. Yeah. Alright, well, I'm just going to have to grind them all out. And but do it's that not slowly. by much, is it? Do it's not tons, they are really close. Okay, well, that's not the word, that, and that's the right one for that one, yeah? Yeah. Okay, well. It's annoying, but at least it's just a case of grinding it slightly bigger. You couldn't make it up really. We've got a whole bag. We've got 450 quid's worth of sea cotton. It's annoying though because we could have spent less on all of this as well. We I know. need this size. I wonder if we made that mistake last year. I guess we could have and then just we returned some last year, didn't we? But it's a bit different when you've got the store right there. Hey ho. Tomorrow we sand. After a fair amount of sanding. This. What can you do? It was time to clean these puppies up with some acetone.
All right, we've just acetoned the through holes and what we need to do now is pour some epoxy in the old bolt holes because the true design ones don't have bolt holes like the Blake's ones. So I'm just gonna cover all the holes with some blue painter's tape because it doesn't really leave a residue and they're nice and clean now. When we come to put the skin fittings on tomorrow, we don't want any tape residue getting in the way of having a good bond with the seeker. So I'm gonna tape all these up now. So that's 20. Yeah. This is some proper backyard <laughs> epoxying. Don't, don't look. <laughs> Scrap that, it's too warm to do epoxy tonight. So we are just cooped up. So I guess we're gonna have to do it in the morning. Right, I am about to head off on a bit of an adventure. Let me just, I can't find anything since we've pulled the boat apart to start this, this work. No, I don't know where that is. I know. It's exactly the same. But yeah, I'm heading to a place called the Do It Centre. It's a 5k. It's 5k away. I'm gonna borrow a lovely woman called Marika who's in the yard, her fold-up bike, and it's 4 p.m. now. So hopefully, fingers crossed, the sun isn't quite so strong. Uh, and I don't get burnt to a shred because it's literally across a desert. <laughs> it's not quite a desert, but it's pretty arid out there. <laughs> uh, anyway, I'm going to pick up a USB powered fan because we can't pick up a local fan because it will have an, a US plug and we're obviously British and we don't have any US plugs on board. So I'm hoping there'll be some kind of USB powered thing. And I also need to pick up some syringes. <laughs> Yesterday evening we were epoxying and we pulled out a syringe from the first aid kit to epox to measure epoxy. It has to be really accurate. We don't have any scales. And that worked fine except you need two. You need one for resin and one for hardener. We only had one. We tried using it for both. Obviously the minute they're contaminated it starts setting. It was just a nightmare and it didn't work. So I'm gonna go today and hopefully get some two syringes at least probably four and then one to replace the one we took out the first aid kit <laughs> might need that at some point <laughs> update i'm somehow lost it's not here i thought it was here <laughs> don't have phone signal i guess i'm just gonna cycle around for a little bit and see what i can find well they didn't have either of the things i needed so Welcome back from your failed mission. Thanks. Good try. So it's the third day trying to mix this epoxy and it's early in the morning and we're really hoping that it's going to be cool enough. So yeah, got to get cracking. Okay, we'll do small amounts then, yeah? Yeah, a little bit frustratingly, but it was actually the marine store opposite the yard that ended up having the syringes. But you know, my soiree out the previous day was still a nice break. It's really hard to spread it out. I'm just going in with a screwdriver and tapping each hole to get the bubbles out. All of the epoxy is now cured and set, which is great. I need to sand back a little bit on the inside and on the outside because it's made a little bit of a ridge. But after we've done that, we're going to start installing all of these, getting that all done. Um, I've got some Seeker 291i, I think that's the right one. It's the structural adhesive one it's out there at the moment but I'll show you guys in a minute they look pretty good we just need to there's some lumps here and there from where it's dripped out a little bit but that shouldn't be too hard to get rid of oh they look pretty good We're just going to do a dry fit now to see how these look from the inside and make sure we don't need to cut off any of the thread. I don't think we do with these, but Becca's just going to make sure they all look good. I know. I hope the floor's going to go down. What? 
I hope the floor's gonna go down. Yeah? Yeah. We're not gonna get the tube on the end too. Really? Yeah, the floor goes there. Uh... We've still got another thingy that goes there, haven't we? Right angle tube for the end. Oh yeah. Alright, everything is prepped. We've dry fitted these. One of them we need to get a different hose connector for because it's gonna be too close to the board. I'm actually gonna start doing these now. I think with these, it's always better to have too much than too little. I'm just gonna use a pallet knife just to get rid of the rest of this. Waste not, want not. I'm gonna use that in the next one. See, that looks quite good. Fingers are the best pallet knife. Zach's just up there putting the washer, more seeker, and the bolt. No, nut. Nut. He's putting the nut on in the inside, and I'm out here on <laughs> tissue paper duty doing the old wipe and switch. I don't know what am I talking about at this point. <laughs> you know what I'm doing. <laughs> Well, I think it's fair to say that it is too hot on Taylor to grow any sprouts, which is sad, <laughs> but it won't be this hot forever. I know that the minute we move on from Aruba, it will be cooler, but yeah, no sprouts for us. <laughs> What's the plan, spanner guy? We need to tighten the nuts on the seacocks. No. Skin cuttings. Yeah. They've been allowed to dry for over 24 hours now, so the seeker should be all cured. And the thing with seeker is you want to let it dry with a little bit of pressure on it and then tighten it up once it's fully dry because it basically acts like a washer or a gasket. Nice. Well, we've woken up this morning and we have a herd of wasps on board. We have, I think there's been six or seven so far. They just keep appearing. We think they're coming through the seacock. Come on, mate. I know you're confused, but just cooperate with me. There's two in the lights at the moment in here. Three. Three? I don't get, did you shut the seacock? I haven't yet. I can't put anything in it. There's so many in there. Well, that was made progress. There's more coming out, Becca. Really? Yeah. What the heck? Oh no, we've been infestated. Can you grab me the um, seacocks and I'll put, screw them on and just shut them? Yeah. Big one. Big and small. Okay. <laughs> right off my business. Ah, no, they're actually swarming. Oh, no, beggar, I need to, I'm going to vlog everything outside. Ah, there's so many out here. Oh, there's another one. Oh, I need to get out of here. Bloody hell, look how many there are. What do we even do? Oh no! Good job, that was good. Be careful. I'm, I am being careful. They're all going in it right now, so we'll get them out. Yeah, now, now, now. Well done. Ah! <laughs> well done. I know it looks like a beehive, it's not. Unfortunately, boat ownership just throws you so many unexpected curveballs. Who would have thought we'd woken up to a bloody wasp infestation? <laughs> We've never even seen a wasp here. Should I go in and try and just like herd them out? At some point you need to get the net on so we can get one out at a time. I can deter them from coming in a little bit. By just standing here. Okay, there's one more out. They go to the sun, they go to the light. Yeah, there, there's three on this little bit here. Oh, there's four, wonderful. They'll get forward and go, I think. This one's just cleaning itself like no cares in the world. It's having a grand old time. Anyway, after that bee takeover, it was time to crack on with the task at hand, attaching the seacocks and hose tails. But first, we had to chop off the pipe cover we made last year in the battery cupboard. Ta-da! As it's just not going to fit around it at the moment. Thank you. Safety first. <laughs> Halfway through the job. <laughs> yeah, I didn't really realise how much dust that would make, but there we go. 
Duh. Nice. I'm going to give that to Nan and it's Pebble. Good work. As you guys would have seen, we were pretty frustrated when we ordered the wrong hose fittings, but thankfully we've managed to get some new ones finally. These ones should fit fine. Some of them are really tight underneath the floorboards, but they just about fit. We've also got load bearing collars now as well. So this one's going to be the one for the engine room because there's a lot of heavy equipment in there and if anything gets loose, we don't want to breaking off our engine intake. So yeah, this just gives a bit more protection. And then these two are going in the battery cupboard ones because if for whatever reason, if one of the battery shelves falls down, it shouldn't, but if it does, these should be able to take the load because they're rated up to 500 pounds and if the batteries are heavier than that, I think we've done something wrong, but yeah. We'll install those now. Um, I'm just gonna acetone everything and then we'll seek them all in, leave them 24 hours, tighten them up a bit more and yeah, attach all the hoses. And then we'll be pretty much done with our skin fittings and seacocks, which is nice. There's a few things that are vitally important on a boat. The sails, rudder, and a working engine. But these things here, called seacocks, are arguably the most important. These are essentially handles which turn a valve to shut off water. This water can either be seawater coming in or grey water going out of the boat. They can be made of metal or plastic like these ones here. The reason we went with these is because they're really durable and don't get attacked by stray electrical current in the water, reducing the need for extra anodes. The black stuff we're applying is called Cetaflex and it's basically a super duper sealant for marine use. And they were done. What a great feeling to tick these off the list and hopefully for a long time too. Come along next Monday as we stick to the under the waterline theme. It's like you waited a long time to do this. Yeah, I hate this thing, but we finally got it all out after some angle grinding and some hammering, blood, some sweat heat. and tears. <laughs> you look like you've been up a chimney. It's all out, I feel disgusting. An upgrade a system or two. So this morning we are installing our shiny new beautiful It is propeller. stunning. 